Welcome to a special episode of the Bring Your Own Grief Network for grieving men only. As always, I am your humbled host, R. Glenn Kelly. Guys, have you gone through the fire of traumatic loss like so many of us and, and having a tough time healing with your partner? Having a hard time understanding yourself or understanding them? Well, you don't want to miss this episode of the BYOG Network. The one I call playing Frisbee with the cat. Now, ladies, this one is for the guys. I, I see you there. Shoo. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. It's a guy thing. I tell you what, I have a coupon here that I'll send to the first lady who closes this video episode down. It's a whopping $5 off your next purchase of a Mercedes Benz. Redeemable at any local Mercedes car dealership. But wait, there's more. Ask for a second coupon right now and you pay only shipping and handling. I'm just kidding with you guys, but please, I think we want to hang out with the guys for a minute. All right, fellas, I think they're gone. Now it's just us. Take a breath. So listen, over the past few years, I've had the wonderful privilege of leading men-only and women-only workshops around the country, mostly at national and regional grief support conferences and mostly attended by couples who'd lost a child or sibling or a parent. Imagine a room full of us men with no women allowed inside, free to just open ourselves up, free to ask, am I okay? And free to just say, man, I don't understand her right now. I think she's gone crazy. Now, on the flip side, imagine my fear the very first time I was asked to sit in a room full of women only, no other men allowed inside, and be the lightning rod for all the what the heck is wrong with you men questions that I got. But I got to tell you guys, as intimidating as that sounds at first, I really do enjoy those workshops now. Yeah, grief, grief is not a light topic, mind you, but I can tell you that there are times when those workshops can be incredibly fun, men's only and women's only. Laughter, tears, and more laughter, and of course, healing together. And laughter really is one of the best medicines, isn't it? Even in our grief. Hey, lean in a little closer here. I want to tell you a secret. You want to know the number one question asked by both groups in literally every men's only and women's only workshop when there's no partner or member of the opposite sex around in the audience? Take a guess. No, it, it's not, how do I get my husband or wife to talk about the loss? Or has my wife been taken over by aliens? No, nope. the number one question is, ready? When are we going to have sex again? Now, shh, don't tell the women I shared it with you. I'll come out of the next woman's only workshop looking like I've just been doing MMA fight and, and lost. Seriously though. I've heard, when are we going to have sex again so much that whenever the question comes up in a workshop now, I get away really, really easy. I just tell them, hey, you know, the other group is asking that very same question. Why don't you guys get together and figure that one out? But really, why don't we get together and figure that one out? Why couldn't we just get together as partners, lovers, spouses, a team of two who chose each other and, well, frankly, have sex again, or, or, or work through so many other relationship issues that can sometimes follow our devastating loss. Now guys, this is men's only, us, so I'm not going to talk a lot about the girls here, mostly us. We have other episodes for that. But for now, could a part of the reason we sometimes don't get together and figure things out with our lifelong companion be because we really don't have an understanding and awareness of what she's all about? Do we really know her? Do we care to know her? Fellas, you have to be aware of who she is, you know? You have to understand her and how she ticks. You picked her after all. I hope you picked her for who she is and not just for what you wanted from her, for you, all right? See, we men have a bad habit of doing that, don't we? We want the best of both worlds. We want to connect for life with our bestest buddy. We want to find that special someone who wants to do whatever we want to do. Let us be who we really are. A partner who understands our needs to watch the playoff game on date night Friday night, appreciates the finer qualities of beer can pyramids and three-day-old beards. 
yet is willing to give us affection and, yes, sex whenever we want it, right? Admit it. Sometimes we have a poor aspect of mutual relationships, don't we? Now, maybe this isn't you, but listen, if it's not, help share this old story to follow with a friend who might be. It's about a young man who gets bored hanging around in his house, all alone. He's a lonely soul. So one day he makes up his mind to go to the pet store to find his perfect companion, a pet he can love and hang with and do all the fun things he wants to do. He had a pretty good grasp of who he was, what, what he wanted to do in life, and thought he had a general idea on what to look for in a companion. So he got all prettied up and went down to the local pet store, thoughts of what his future would be like dancing through his mind. He opened the door to the shop, the little bell dinging above his head, and he looks around. So many possibilities here. So many pets he might be able to have fun with. Then suddenly his eyes are drawn to this one beautiful cat. Not just a cat now, but a gorgeous cat. Pretty face with a big set of full round eyes. And long, gorgeous, flowing fur. He felt flush. The name on the cage said Miss Kitty. And he couldn't help but pick her up. Oh, she was so soft and... She smelled so good, and when he pulled her in close, she rubbed her head right there under his chin, nuzzling in and purred. Boom. Yep. Our lucky fellow found his companion. And when he got home with his new furry partner, he couldn't wait. He put her on the floor, and he plopped down in his big old easy chair and patted his chest several times. Yeah, kitty. Nothing. No leaping up into his waiting arms. Instead, she just looked kind of annoyed. As a matter of fact, she, she actually turned and walked across the room. Hmm, that's okay, he said to himself. She'll catch on to me eventually, I'm sure. So, what next? Aha, he opened a big bag of goodies he bought at the pet store along with a cat, and he pulls out a leash. Sure, that's it. He'll just walk his new companion down to the park for some fun. Man, he, he's really been looking forward to this. He loves the park, and now he has someone to go play with. So he slips a leash around the cat's neck and starts for the door only to feel his little companion fighting and pulling back against a leash. So he gives it a little tug, lightly, of course. Maybe she just doesn't realize they were about to have so much fun. No good. It just makes her pull back harder. Again, another little tug, but this time she begins to screech and yow. So he stops. Wow, he says. Well, we'll have to work on that one too, I guess. So instead, he scoops her up with one arm and he grabs his bag of goodies and out the door they go, together. Just two companions headed out to have fun. They get to the park a few blocks away and our boy sets Miss Kitty down while he reaches into his bag and pulls out a frisbee that he bought at the pet shop. He, he bought it for both of their enjoyments, of course. In the meantime, however, Miss Kitty has occupied herself with a dandelion bloom, exploring it with her cute little nose and patting it with her paws. Look, he says to the cat as he sticks a frisbee in front of her nose. She sniffs at it, but directly goes right back to pawing at the dandelion. So, he scoops her up again in one hand, pointing her little body this time out into the open field as he slings a frisbee. He drops her to the ground really quick and encourages her, Go, Miss Kitty, go get it! She doesn't, of course. Doesn't even look in that direction and instead bounds right back over to the dandelion. Well, that's disappointing, he mumbles. He can't figure out what's going on. And time after time after time throughout the day, he throws a frisbee. And time after time after time, Miss Kitty has no interest whatsoever. Now she's bored, she's tired, agitated, and even snaps at him a few times when he goes to point her towards a frisbee. And our boy is exasperated too, slowly wondering about his choice of companions, a little confused that she doesn't want to do what he wants to do. How could she not? She's his pet. Well, bringing a long story to an unhappy ending, day after day go by, park visit after park visit, failed frisbee toss after failed frisbee toss. Eventually, our boy gives up. Today, he and Miss Kitty simply coexist, without much interest in being in each other's company. He's there in the house. She's there in the house. They respect each other, all right, but pretty much do their own thing. Sad. That's the story. The end. Now, don't tell anybody, but I heard our boy occasionally sneak down to the park to toss a frisbee with a strange dog or two from time to time, but hey, it's just idle gossip. And regardless, let's not be like our frisbee flipping friend here. I'm going to say that three times fast. Let's bring this back to us. 
There's simply no question that men and women are different as dogs and cats are different as pets. And men and women process the emotions of grief in differing ways. Men, team, uh, we tend to be more internal with our emotions. It doesn't mean we don't have them. Watch some of my other episodes on male and female grief and I'll show you, for example, empirical data that reveals men actually experience more emotions on average than women. We just don't process them the way you do or the way women do. We process them inside where no one sees. But that means women are more outward with their emotional feelings, more tears, more prone to seek support and comfort from others. It's in their nature. And sometimes we forget that their nature is not ours. The best way to be true and supportive companion to your partner when going through the grief journey we all must travel is be open to awareness and understanding of their differing ways. Now, she might be a cat. She's certainly not a dog, my friend. But listen, this ain't all about us. This ain't all about you, buddy. She has to realize that you aren't a cat. Men are action-oriented, problem solvers, frisbee chasers. She needs to have awareness and understanding of that too. Now, I actually had the privilege this past fall in presenting a workshop at a conference on the ways both men and women express grief. It was open to both men and women, and there was one particular bright, young, grieving man in the audience there with his bereaved wife, both in their mid-20s, and it was a recent loss of their very young and only child. He told me openly before the group that he was having problems, but he was there to learn how he could help his wife. She was just so lost, says he, and he couldn't seem to help her at all. He went on to say that he was very frustrated, pulling out his hair. His wife seemed lost and he was a man of the house and it was his job to protect and fix his wife's problems. When she cried, and she cries so much, says he, he can't do anything to stop her. When he comforts her, it doesn't seem to do any good. When he tries to tell her that it will be okay, nothing changes. How can he fix her? Now, it was obvious that he was probably at least second generation South American, but he volunteered that when he said, damn it, I'm Latin blooded and I was a sergeant in the U.S. Army. It's in my blood to be the head of the household and fix her problems for her. Now, mind you, he wasn't pounding his fist when he said this. It was actually more like he was asking for validity when he said it. Shouldn't I be fixing everything is how it came across. So I told him first he needed to know that rarely is a woman looking for a man to fix her problems. As a matter of fact, in a tactful way, I asked the entire conference room, ladies, are there any of you here that wants a man to fix your problems when you tell them to him? Well, this was met with a resounding no in unison from almost all the women in the room, along with some lighthearted laughter. Even apart from the grief, rarely does a woman tell her man problems she really wants him to try to solve. She just wants to talk about it. Our grieving young father had to become aware of this. You know, being a male counselor with a female patient must be one of the easiest jobs in the world. Just sit back and listen to her. And when the hour's over, smile and gladly accept the thanks she'll give you for being so helpful. He didn't lift a finger or say a thing. Beauty, huh? Now, marriage can be like that, by the way, if we only understand it. So anyway, I explained to our grieving father in the group that she wants comfort, which will help carry her through while she works out her problems. I also explained to him that he had hit the nail on the head of frustration. We are men. We are problem solvers. It's in our nature, Latin blood or not, to fix whatever is wrong within our realm. When we can't seem to fix our partners, it confuses us, aggravates us, and can actually make us shut down. A man who can't solve a problem is a man who runs to the cave to sit and brood. We even have a tendency to try to resolve problems that happened in the past, don't we? Even when we can't go back and fix them, we'll just sit and rehash it and rehash it and rehash it, trying to come up with a way that would have led to a better outcome. Brooding hits for us when we can't come up with that answer. And anxieties can hit when we can't come up with ways to fix our wives. But when it comes to our partners, guys, we don't always need to fix them, do we? Sometimes we just need to listen and to comfort them. Just be there. It's not like it's a lot of work, right? If she wants you to fix something, she'll tell you. And yes, even in her deep anguish, I think we were able to get across to his poor wife that she too should understand the internal drives of her husband to come to her rescue. 
Now, I've heard from them recently by email, and it seems they're continuing well together down their grief journey. Now, listen, gents, I know grief is not a funny thing, so I hope I haven't offended anyone with my light humor in this episode. I am so very sorry for your loss, as I know you are of mine. But laughter can be good. I remember the first time I laughed after I lost my son, Jonathan. I remember it clearly, just as I remember the guilt I felt as soon as I realized I was laughing. But over time, it became okay, and it became healing. Again, laughter is the best medicine. And know that I have many other episodes here on the BYOG Network that cover distinct differences in the way men and women express our emotions, especially as it relates to loss. Please watch them when you have the opportunity. We cover nature and nurture in ways we are pre-wired to respond in just the way we often do. And more than anything else, it lets us know that we are all different. No two of us grieve alike, but we are okay. Now, do me a favor, please, and leave us some comments below this video and like it and share it with others who are going down the same path of hope and healing as you and I. And hey, why not subscribe to the BYOG channel? It costs nothing. Your, your email is not trapped in some marketing program, and it only helps other bereaved souls find us for support. Thank you. Oh, and ladies, I was born at night, but not last night. I know you're still here, and, and that's fine. It'll save me a few bucks on Mercedes coupons anyway. Please feel free to leave your comments below this video episode as well. I really look forward to all comments and discussions. So that's it for this BYOG episode where you bring your own emotions, bring your own pains, bring your own questions, and bring your own grief. As always, I am R. Glenn Kelly, father to my angel, Jonathan Taylor Kelly. And we both wish you peace and purpose.